The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Software AG webinar titled Enterprise Architecture as an Enabler for Effective Innovation Management. Today's webinar will be presented by David Ferry, Director of Alphabet Product Management. My name is Michelle, and I'm the Marketing Director for Software AG's Business Transformation Products. I'll be chatting out some links to you during the presentation, and you'll also hear from me during the Q&A portion of today's session. Speaking of Q&A, as we move through today's program, we invite you to ask David any questions that you might have, which he'll address later in the session. Asking questions is easy. Just type them into the questions tab and hit submit when you're ready. Your questions will be anonymous to the rest of the audience. And one more housekeeping item before I hand things over to David. The session is being recorded and will be, a made, will be made available to you. And with that, I'll hand it over to David now. Okay, and thank you, Michelle. And uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this presentation today. And thank you for the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present. I'll be talking about uh, enterprise architecture and uh, innovation management and how one uh, can help the other and how we as uh, enterprise architecture practitioners can get involved in the innovation management process. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use a couple of slides to talk about the topic. And then I'll actually close with a short demonstration showing how we do that uh, using uh, Software AG's uh, Enterprise Architecture Tool, uh, Alphabet. Start off with the topic of innovation. I went on mute for some reason, but I'm back. Um, and what I wanted to do is start off with uh, some inspiration, some of the positive things that might help us to get involved in innovation. Uh, and some quotes. So to do that, um, uh, I'll just pull in the quotes. Um, the first one here is actually from Charles Kettering. Charles Kettering uh, is uh, apparently a holder of 186 patents. He was head of research for General Motors for a long time. And one of the things he said is that if you've always done something in a certain way, it's probably wrong. And I think this is quite uh, a provoking statement because it really tells us to question the things that we do and how we do it uh, as a source of innovation. Because many things we do, we do out of tradition, not necessarily because it's the most op uh, optimized way. Uh, another quote here from Edison. Um, he's talking about the value of an idea and how it lies in the using of it. And his really encouraging is to be practical, not just to uh, do the philosophical part of innovation, come up with the good ideas, but also have to put our hands, get our hands dirty and try them out. And that's the only benefit really uh, of the idea at the end of the day. Um, a third one here is from Tom Feston. Um, Tom Feston actually is one of the founding members of the team that created uh, MTV. And he said innovation is taking two things that exist and putting them together in a new way, uh, which with music and video and channels, uh, he did to create MTV. Uh, but I find this good because it really means part of innovation is just taking a look around us and trying to uh, think about how we could do things in a different way and that the solutions behind the innovation might not be that far from, from us, they might be in front of us, we just need to uh, try out some combinatoric work. And the last one is here from Alfred Noble and he said, if, I've, if I have a thousand ideas and only one turns out to be good, then I'm satisfied. Uh, and this is really saying, don't, don't be disheartened with failure. Uh, if you don't try things, then you'll never reach anything. And part of trying things is that some of them work and some of them don't. Uh, and so this should really encourage us to keep innovating. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, have to take in some inspiration. Uh, to, that was the carrot, and this is more like the stick. Say why we need to innovate. And really, it's more important than ever before. This is just a graph showing the average life, lifespan of a company on the SP500. There are many reasons that lifespan is getting shorter, also investment life cycles are getting shorter. But one of the reasons is that companies are just not surviving as long as they used to. 
Um, and this has to do with various things. Uh, we see things in the market that are changing. There's first mover advantage and brand building. Uh, one of being increasingly associated with digital products and services, so we need to be innovative in this area. Uh, but also, um, the innovations behind that are becoming uh, are coming out in shorter and shorter uh, cycles, in shorter lead times. So we have to be uh, extremely aware of what's going on around us to be able to keep up with the innovation that's going on around us and to be able to keep ahead in the market. And uh, in the markets that we're in, it might be that winner takes all is not a, a topic. It is obviously in some digital markets, um, but it's also coming common outside. Uh, breaking into a, something like the automotive market is extremely difficult. We've seen that with innovation, Tesla has certainly dented that market and certainly caused a, a radical change to that market, uh, but it's unusual. Uh, so it's really good to be ahead on the innovation curve. It gives you a big advantage. And obviously there are many companies and organizations that we know uh, where due to uh, either not realizing an innovation or, or a change in the market um, or not reacting to it, uh, these companies are no longer existing or no longer as big as they were. Uh, so this really is, it wants to underline why we need to innovate. Now when I think about innovation and when we talk about it um, in, in our team, we tend to look at it from two directions. Uh, one is technology innovation, and this is really saying, okay, in terms of our innovation process, um, what's going on outside our organization which is going to change and impact us? Um, and how do we need to react to that? And then we talk about business innovation, and this is really the opposite side saying, okay, what are we as an organization trying to do to be innovative in the market? And it's two different questions behind it. Uh, the technology innovation is a bit like, what's this for? Uh, this is, I've just invented the wheel and what can I do with it? Uh, and the other one is saying, okay, I've got this great idea for an electric car, but how do I realize it? Uh, so it's two different uh, approaches to innovation and both of them are, are valid in every, probably every organization. Uh, so what can we do as EA practitioners to nurture innovation? What sort of things uh, stand out? Uh, and I want to go through four of these. Uh, one is to actually and this is especially in the area of uh, technology innovations, to just gather and roadmap those innovations. Have some idea and some structure behind what's going, out in the world, uh, what's going on in the world and when we expect it to happen. Uh, the second is to then look at those and look at our own business innovations and uh, understand their impact and potential. Uh, a third one is um, if we want to, once we've understood the potential, then uh, act on it then start road mapping the implementation of that innovation. And this becomes very core EA work when we talk about transformation planning, this sort of thing. And the fourth one um, is to in involve people, encourage collaboration around innovation. And uh, innovation is something that's not best done alone in the corner. It's, it's sort of uh, something that if, if, there's, uh, if it's a group activity, if it's a community activity, a lot more ideas come up and there's uh, more inspiration. So look at these in a bit more detail. So if we talk about gathering and road mapping innovations, um, one thing has to be said is that this needs time. It's not um, something that's a free lunch. If we do not dedicate um, people in our organization or part of the time of people in our organization to do this, whether it's within the EA organization or within the product houses or wherever innovation is being looked at, um, then it won't happen. Um, why do we want to gather them? Want to give structure to what, to our innovation process to help um, uh, define a process which gives us insights, decision making, um, etc. To to make sure that our organisation, in a way, is being being um, showing due diligence in how it how it works with innovation. Uh, the other is it, it avoids duplication if we find out that the same sort of things are being looked at in various parts of our large organization uh, then we can hopefully consolidate that and um, those two processes can feed into each other so it happens more quickly uh, it provides transparency uh, in terms of um, what's going on in the market and road mapping the innovations that we gather that is not implementation this is just saying okay when do we expect something like artificial intelligence to be big to impact our organization uh, when do we expect to be able to use it uh, this helps provide a time frame 
uh, for our effort, but also supports uh, decision making and communication. If we have a transparent roadmap for, for some of the main things that we're looking at, then it helps explain why we're not doing this year, this this year, but we're focusing on this topic. Um, the next topic here was uh, after the gathering and road mapping was the assessing uh, of impact and potential. And uh, many of these things are the same, whether we're looking at technology or business innovation, um, slight differences. Uh, but obviously when we do this, we want to consider two things. One is what is the business impact of the, the innovation that, uh, that we see? And this could be the, an innovative new product that we're doing, a business innovation, where we want to know, okay, um, how much is uh, revenue we're going to get? Is it going to involve a strategy change or a marketing change? Um, what capabilities, processes, or organizations do we need to deliver it? Um, or it could be um, a technology innovation where we want to understand um, is this new innovation going to affect the way we create products? Yeah, we want to understand uh, this sort of business impact, but we also want to understand whether it's going to change our, our, our technologies. Uh, do we need to implement new technologies? Or do we need a new platform strategy, service strategy, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And we want to look at these two things from different perspectives, maybe from more than two perspectives. I'm sure something like finance would be a perspective. And the sort of questions we might be asking is, uh, are things like, um, is this opportunity strategic or operational? Are we looking at new business models or uh, an innovation that's going to make our uh, operating model work for half the price? Uh, that would be a big innovation. Um, associated, associated Associated with that, we'd want to understand the KPIs. What outcomes are we expecting? Uh, an increase in customer engagement, for example. Um, and we'd want to measure that. Uh, we want to look at timeframes. Uh, when will this be realized? When will the innovation be available? When can our organization, our specific organization, digest this innovation and make use of it? Yeah, that's an internal roadmap. Um, we look at feasibility. Uh, do we have the skills? Uh, if not, when can we acquire them? How do we want to address skills? How do we want to look at innovation realization, the incubation approach? Uh, but we also understand things like are standards being developed? If not, um, are there risks involved that they might be and that we might go down the wrong track? Uh, is there an architectural impact that is major? And obviously, cost is always a factor, and we'd be looking at things like acquisition costs, know how transfer, uh, implementation programs. Uh, release strain financing, etc. Um, the sort of uh, assessments we do, obviously, um, we want to communicate and we'd use not necessarily portfolio diagrams, but portfolio diagrams are quite good for communication, uh, radar diagrams, whatever we might use, but we need the sort of imagery uh, to make uh, the things that we've found out with our assessments um, easily digestible to the people that are making decisions. Uh, it's typical that we have this type of visualization. When we look at the actual implementation, we've done our gathering, we've done an assessment, we've decided to go for a specific uh, innovation, then we'd be looking at the classic sort of uh, transformation program, uh, obviously linked with some major, um, maybe milestones inside or outside the organization concerning uh, in cases maybe of technology innovations. Uh, and typically we'd do this, this is again chart, uh, and we see here, uh, release trains, program increments, and we see certain milestones, uh, dependencies. That's part of our, our, our typical rollout um, uh, map. But we'd also maybe see things like this, and this is where we're looking at, okay, we have an understanding of our operating model, which organizations are in processes uh, and IT is involved, and uh, are we, uh, do we have a migration plan? And this is the sort of thing that we're looking at, which might help, to help us communicate better with certain stakeholders, um, when they'll be moving from doing things one way to another way. And important also is also the KPIs uh, for business. Okay, based on this sort of um, approach that we're taking with our innovation, we expect in this case, uh, our customer engagement to be better. And we've got a roadmap for when we expect that engagement. This obviously puts our, our neck in the noose because we'll be measured by it, but it's also part of the road mapping of the innovation. We don't just want to understand the implementation, we want to understand the benefit and uh, have milestones about when certain things such as products or services are going to be available. 
Uh, and last but not least, we talked about um, involving people in listening. And there are a few things we can do there. One is sharing the knowledge. So if we uh, do gather and um, collect the innovations, uh, we can obviously make that available in portals and share that knowledge so that people also have that in the organization. We'd also make transparent where we are and what we're looking at. Uh, encourage collaboration. We could obviously create teams, MS teams, groups, et cetera, et cetera, to talk about uh, certain things and then use that as a, a feedback and communication loop on certain topics. And we could in, uh, maybe encourage people to self-register uh, for these things. Uh, it's good to be open. Um, I can imagine if you have an ideation process and every idea that comes in is actually then rejected, that after a while no more ideas come in. And even if we reject an idea, we're obviously not going to accept every idea that comes in. We'll probably reject most of them. Um, but um, it's good to be um, uh, communicative in that, to say, okay, we've looked at it. This is the results of what we've seen. Maybe it doesn't fit into our core business model currently, et cetera, et cetera. A bit of an explanation behind it. Uh, sponsor experiments. Uh, obviously, that requires budget. Um, but it's very important to try things out. Uh, without it, there's no innovation. And as we saw in one of the quotes at the beginning, some of those will fail and we have to tolerate it. The result of not tolerating failure is that nobody tries to innovate. Uh, and that is obviously causes us to uh, stand where we are and go nowhere. Uh, so those are some of the thoughts I just wanted to, uh, to place before going on to the uh, demo part of the presentation. With that, I'm going to leave the, brow uh, leave the presentation and go over to the browser. Uh, my session was just about to time out. Here I am actually logged on to uh, Alphabet. Uh, looks quite busy. This is actually uh, the interface, uh, we would call it a profile uh, for a program manager of an application portfolio uh, program. That's not the topic today. Um, I just wanted to use it to point out that uh, we have the idea of different uh, access for different types of users. And here is an APM program manager. He's got information here over the most expensive applications, how many are being phased in and out. Uh, and he has certain objects that he looks at all the time here on the left-hand side, such as capabilities, applications, uh, IT, uh, and locations, this sort of thing. But we're actually talking about uh, innovation, so I'm going to uh, change profile. Typically, you'd only have one profile, but we, uh, you can change between different profiles. And we're going to look at the one for the innovation manager uh, to look at the sort of things that we might want to uh, consider uh, as part of the work uh, and how that is supported with software. So here we are logged on as an innovation manager. We see here that the sort of things that he's looking at on the left-hand side are different. Uh, he has things like innovations, ideas, trends, patents, strategy, uh, and then some operating model um, capabilities, such, uh, uh, such as operating model artifacts, such as capabilities, processes, and organizations. Uh, this is um, configurable. The sort of roles that we have in the organization tend to be uh, not necessarily the same in every organization, uh, but also some people have um, fuzzy roles and not necessarily core roles. And so uh, these sort of things need to be configurable. You can obviously here create new things as part of it, uh, see recent objects that have been visited, and there are certain uh, widgets up here that express the status of certain projects. What we also see here is an innovation roadmap. So here we see actually um, this is actually a business innovation, I can tell by the icon, um, but this is a business innovation. And we see things such as milestones. When do we expect this innovation to be available? Uh, and when do we expect as an organization to realize the benefits from it? So we can do some road mapping to manage the expectations within the organization. What I'd like to do is look at this topic of ideas first. Ideation is part of the innovation process. And here we just have an overview, it's a list, it's a tabular view uh, of the ideas that this innovation manager has received to look at. Some of them have already been reviewed, so he has a little box here of reviewed ideas. Some of them are still open. And um, there are filters and the typical things you'd have to be able to look at this in different perspectives. You could sort it, uh, for example, by impact or by name, et cetera. Uh, I want to take a closer look at one of them. So I'd look at this one here, establish a new customer advisory service. And this is an idea uh, that was submitted by somebody else. And we see certain things that um, were entered by the person that submitted. It was actually submitted here by uh, this guy called Pika, who's in sales. 
and um, it's actually got a status here. It's gone through to approved. And the description, the description here is uh, something that the submitter put in. It might be enhanced, obviously, by the person that's reviewing or looking at it later. And we see here some business benefits that they described. And um, during submission, they have the option to associate it with various uh, objects. That is something that is in context. So as a salesman, um, he's actually offered as objects in the way this is configured, uh, things like products, uh, the processes, the sales processes, and a couple of the applications he uses. He does not have to associate it. It obviously just makes it easier to direct it to a certain person to look at if it's associated. Uh, and that's configurable. Um, he, I could like this idea. If I do, then the number of likes will go up. Uh, so this is sort of basic information. We also have the possibility here to look at a collaboration. This is a discussion thread that was started for this idea, and there are different people that have contributed to it. And such these sort of discussion threads are obviously useful in involving people in getting the sort of community know-how approach. Um, there are two things I'd like to look at before leaving this this uh, uh, dashboard, as we'd call it. Uh, one is this this is this idea is quite advanced in the analysis, and it's been broken down actually into um, here into what we would call demands or epics. Uh, so it's been broken down into pieces that are then actionable. The idea is, was submitted was not actionable, but we've broken it down into actionable ideas and we've actually given those then roadmaps. And we've associated actually this tree here as a project with one of these demands. So we've actually gone a step further and started to create a project. So this is the way that we can go from the idea to the actual implementation. We have to have some sort of transition from one to the other. This is just a pie chart showing the uh, status. And below, we see the impacted architecture. So we see that this is going to impact certain implica uh, applications, capabilities, processes, uh, and these are actually products, uh, technology products. And this helps us in, in obviously to understand the impact of the idea and to plan our um, development and how we might want to change it. But it also helps us consolidate. We might actually see uh, that there are other ideas or other demands out there that are impacting similar objects and uh, we can then do a consolidation analysis. Uh, with that, I'd go back to the home page and uh, just take a quick look at here my ideas. So this is something that each user could have. And this is basically a view of the ideas that you submitted yourself. Uh, the view is sort of similar. It's tabular, uh, but it uh, can be changed if you want to make it more colorful. Uh, one of the things that you can do here is also look um, at the workflow. There's workflow behind this process. And we can look at this and understand, OK, Currently, the idea I submitted is the owner of the product that uh, I associated it with. Uh, so we can follow um, the step the step by step how my idea is being processed if we allow uh, the users to see this, which we would. We think transparency is, is best. Um, so with that, I'd like to then switch over to actually the innovation side of the discussion. After that, we're going to look at the innovations here. And here, uh, you'll see that we have here um, business innovations, it's actually split into operation model innovations and uh, product and service innovations. This is a, a grouping structure that you can freely describe yourself as a taxonomy in that sense. And same here with technology innovations. And we're going to take a closer look at these. The technology innovations, we've decided to split it by um, what it could impact. So we saying, okay, this could be something that improves our customer experience or FinTech, this is actually a bank. Uh, our IoT technology uh, attempts or our mobile technologies, this sort of, uh, this sort of thing, idea. Uh, if we open this up further, we see that uh, the actual innovations are in this group. So we see a set of innovations have been defined that are going to impact our customer experience. And one of them, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, we could open up uh, again. And what we have here is the possibility to say, okay, this innovation of artificial intelligence it's not like one single innovation, it's actually a grouping of technologies that are coming together to give us to give us this. So we can describe that innovation. And this gives us the option, if we just click on one of these, to actually then link into our normal technology, uh, our classic technology architecture. So here we see, okay, this event stream processing, uh, it's already being supported or tried out in our organization uh, by certain products. And um, if I want to find out more about that, I could drill into this and I'd come to the information on the technology architecture, any standards that we've defined, et cetera. Uh, 
any usage of that, I could say, okay, um, which applications use this technology? It just gives us a link from the innovation uh, into the classic architecture from the technology perspective. If we take a look at the um, artificial intelligence uh, as an innovation itself, uh, we can see more uh, information on uh, what's been gathered, what's in our inventory of innovations. Uh, we see things such as here the probability available, uh, probable availability date, benefit, benefit realization date. It's been assigned to an only organization. Uh, and here we see that um, although it's here assigned to uh, customer experience, it's also seen to be impacting IoT technologies and fintech. So we see this being used in different ways in the organization. Um, we also see there have been certain assessments already that have been done. Uh, we consider it transformational, there's a probability, and we've assessed risks, benefits, alignment, and, and effort. This supports us in our portfolio decisions. Uh, we can relate it to any ideas that have been submitted. So here we see our, uh, the idea that we looked at, the new customer advisory service, uh, something that is also um, looking at changing the customer experience, we've related them, and any trends that we're gathering. Uh, and here again, we see a roadmap. Another aspect that we can consider here is also this business survey. And what has been done here is a link to the other side to say, what's the business impact? And this has been done in this case uh, by looking at the capabilities that are impacted. So here we see a capability map for the organization and we've highlighted certain capabilities that we really think are gonna be impacted by artificial intelligence. What we've also done is then initiate a survey and this survey has gone to the people that are re responsible for these capabilities. So if we look at this status of the survey, we'll see that there are three participants. They have different roles. One is the owner of the capability. Two of them have been given a role, innovation contributor for the capability. And they've done a survey. They filled it out. Uh, and the results are actually here in this scorecard. Uh, and this is just another way of having uh, engagement with the different stakeholders to try and get feedback, to try and get them in the innovation process. Uh, if we go a level higher again, we'll, we'll, we're at what we'd call the group level. Uh, we see here again a roadmap. Uh, what I wanted just to point out is the portfolio assessments. Uh, we, there are various here that have been defined. Um, if we look at one of them, uh, just quickly, uh, we see here one, okay, what is the risk of the, the innovation proposes in terms of uh, our ability to use it? And what is the benefit? Uh, obviously, the things here at the bottom with the low risk and high benefit are the things that are going to interest us. But we also see we have further indicators such as the color, um, which is the, um, the impact, whether it's going to have, be transformational or not. Uh, and here it's very transformational. And the size, which is the effort. So obviously, something like this, which is uh, in the right quadrant, uh, and little effort and big impact is the sort of thing we'd focus on. It's a, it, it would be considered more of a quick win. Uh, but this sort of thing, again, just supports that decision-making process. And if we go to the, um, the very top level, again, to the technology innovations, we see the roadmap that we saw in the presentation. And this is just one way, another way of communicating um, the status of our innovation management program, but also helps us to see certain things. Now, this roadmap is, we call it a circular roadmap. There's probably a better name for it. Um, but really it's showing here with the different uh, shells how far in the future we expect the innovation to uh, occur uh, and to become relevant to us in this case. Uh, so the further out, the less likely we, we have urgency to look at it now. We also see how many areas it's going to impact in our organization. That is the different segments. So obviously the ones that are in this three are the ones that probably have a bigger impact on us. So we might want to focus on those. What we also see is a color. This is uh, red is transformational and a shape. And the shape here is actually, there are three shapes that are used in this view. Uh, one is saying, okay, we've gathered the innovation. We, we've documented it. The second says that we've broken it down into uh, executable demands and we, we saw that we can do that. And these executable demands are associated uh, uh, as something that um, we understand. So we have an idea of what we can do. Uh, and the last shape, the diamond, says we've associated with a project. That means there's something already happening. Now, what this helps us do is identify things that are urgently wrong. Uh, in this case, urgently wrong might be this blockchain. It's very transformational, but nothing's been done with it yet. We don't have any idea of what we need to do with it. We don't have any projects, but it's not far out. 
The same with this chatbot advisors. So again, it gives us an ability to say, okay, this is where we are, and this is why we have to act urgently on this topic uh, and to support those sort of management discussions. So uh, with that, I'd uh, just bring in the presentation again um, and uh, close the demo. And anyway, just like to go back to um, the first slide to summarize again, the sort of uh, things that we were looking at. Sorry, I'm just flashing a bit here, but this one where we look, we talked about gathering and uh, road mapping innovations, assessing their impact and potential. Uh, the roadmap topic of once we've got the innovation, made a decision, and the fact that we need to involve people and listen. I, these are, I think, really four core things that we as EA can contribute to innovation management. And I think it's a very important topic, uh, which um, if we can get involved in it, um, I think helps us uh, also with our profile in the organization, but also, is something we, with as EA specialists, with the knowledge that we have and the, the sort of tools that we have, can really contribute to and ensure that organization is better at innovating. So with that, um, I think I'd just like to close the, the presentation part and uh, open up the Q&A. Uh, Michelle, I don't know if you have any questions for me? Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first one, you show the innovation radar at the end. Can I change this report to use different KPIs or attributes? Uh, yeah, the circle with the, the different triangles and dots and colors on it. Uh, this is a, a report that we have. We call it a circular roadmap report. And um, it's, it's one of the configurable reports that we have. We have many different types of reports that are configurable, configurable such as the Gantt chart that we saw or the portfolio diagram we saw. And we have report assistants that help us create those reports. And so you can change the KPIs on there. You can change also uh, what's represented for each one, obviously. So you could, uh, instead of shape, you can have a color for a certain KPI or color or shape, you could change that. But you can also create these uh, sort of circular roadmaps, as we call them, for different types of objects. So it doesn't have to be for an innovation. It could also be for uh, your application landscape, if you have a roadmap for that or for um, your strategy, uh, strategic themes, if you wanted to have a, a, that sort of roadmap chart showing the different strategic themes and which areas of the organization they uh, impact. So yes, that is something that you can do and it's a, a very useful tool. Great, um, we have another one here uh, specifically to slide 10 and the question is what software products were used to produce the innovation roadmap on slide 10? Um, the innovation roadmap was uh, was alphabet. That's an alphabet Gantt chart. Great. Okay, assume we're, I'll just go to slide ten to make sure we're talking about this, the right thing. So th all these are actually screenshots from alphabet, all three of them, uh, and they're all configurable reports. Great. And on that note, um, can alphabet integrate with Eris? Uh, yes, there's a standard, uh, standard uh, interoperability that we have. It's a standard module uh, that supports um, the exchange of uh, artifacts between the two products. You can also link between the two interfaces, that sort of thing. Great, thank you. So the next question is, do I have to use Alphabet for discussion on an idea or can I use our standard collaboration platform? Okay, yeah, the, the way I showed it here was with our internal discussion thread, but we also have integration to collaboration platforms uh, such as MS Teams, and you can then um, use that to show uh, views and diagrams and things like that. In MS Teams, you can have discussion which is being uh, contributed to either from the MS Teams uh, interface or from the Alphabet uh, interface, and it all comes into the same discussion. Uh, so that sort of collaboration with external platforms, yeah, we support it. Great. Um, question about Kanban. Do you support Kanban for ideas? Yeah, good question. Yes, we do actually. Um, we have, uh, again, it's one of these uh, reports that we have that we, you can configure and has an assistant. And we provide Kanban uh, sample reports for uh, ideas, for demands, uh, for features. 
uh, and also for other artifacts. You don't, it, it's, again, it's a report that you can actually focus around uh, any uh, type of artifact and you can use it uh, to change the status or to change a relationship to another object. Uh, they're quite powerful and actually quite useful tools. I, I quite like using them a lot for, for different purposes. Great, and we've got one final question. Um, is the business capability road, the business capability map following a specific methodology or a standard, for example, TOGAF, BizBoc, um, and is it compatible with ARIS and or ArchMate? Um, the, the capabilities, if we have them, yeah, they're, they're compatible. We actually have, as part of the standard in, interoperability, um, also the exchange of capabilities. Um, the uh, methodology is, is uh, something that I think is the same in most frameworks uh, for how you create uh, capability maps. I don't think that's an issue, and it's uh, uh, TOGAF is one of the ones that we support, uh, as is Archimate. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the answer to those questions is yes. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so with that, we've completed our Q&A portion of the session. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you, David, for presenting, and thank you so much to the organizers for making the session happen today. We so appreciate it. And thank you to the audience for joining us in today's session. Again, um, the recording will be made available. Um, we'll also follow up with you, um, and feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank you, Mike, from my side.